All right, guys, welcome back. Let's talk to everyone. Actually, let's look at this first. <clears throat> Completing the Crucible device will require entire systems of resources and skilled workers, as well as <clears throat> the galaxy's brightest scientists. So we got ourselves some Javelin missile launchers. Commander, thank you for allowing me the use of your ship and for going along with this plan. Garrus said he had to attend to the Normandy's weapon systems. Something about calibrations. Sounds like Garrus. I'm sorry to say the Asari counselor won't be joining us. He thinks there's too much bad blood with the Krogan. She may be right, but there'll be a lot more blood. Real blood, if we don't try. <clears throat> when you put it that way. The sooner we have this summit, the sooner we'll know. Is there something else I can help you with? Let's inve investigate more. I understand this is a difficult time for you, Primarch, but Earth can't survive without reinforcements. Can I still count on your help? If the Krogan help us on Palavan, then I give you my word. How is it being the Primarch? Not what I imagined. The battle of all time is happening on Palavan, and I'm light years away, reading casualty reports in the millions. If I'm going to die, I want to be with my men, so there's no doubt we fought to the last soul. I understand. Leaving Earth to save it. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done. I'm not surprised. Garrus speaks highly of you. You never asked to be a leader, yet your people will die if you refuse. We find ourselves in similar circumstances. Let's hope the spirits grant us the strength to see it through. How are things on Palavan? The casualty reports are staggering. The Reapers are using our own tactics against us. Destroy the enemy with overwhelming force. I've seen the same on Earth. The strategist in me admires their brutality. The Turian in me knows I'm watching the destruction of 15,000 years of civilization. My civilization. Thank you, Primarch. My thoughts are with Palavan. And mine with Earth. Oh, okay. Commander, Edie just went offline. What? What do you mean, offline? I don't know. She's not responding, and I can't access the AI core diagnostics. You better get down to deck three. Commander, comm systems are going haywire. Whatever's happening is centered on deck three. See if you can get to Edie. I'll check the AI core. I'll check this out after. Oh wait, her her system is inside the um Where am I going? I don't know why I came down here. Her <clears throat> the computer that gains access to ED is uh It's in the crew quarters in the medical wing. Oops, wrong way. I said crew quarters, I meant it on the crew deck. Oh, that AI freaking robot was in that room. Joker, what's that sound? Fire extinguishers, Commander. <clears throat> Could be an electrical fire or something. The Dr. Ava chick? Definitely why ED went offline. I'm going in. Edie, talk to me.
Is there a particular topic you wish to discuss, Shepard? Whoa. Edie? Yes. You're in Dr. Eva's body. Not all of me, but I have control of it. It was not a seamless transition. Now can we be sure that... Edie, you need to alert us about incidents like this. You shouldn't have done this alone. Bringing the crew up to speed would have been counterproductive. All attempts to help would have been limited mm -hmm. by reaction time. Edie's got a body to match her voice now. So if you're in there, are you still in the ship? I exist primarily within the ship. For optimal control, this unit should remain within Normandy's broadcast or tight beam range. Are you planning to take that body somewhere? Normandy's weaponry is not suited to every combat situation. This platform could provide limited fire ground support. You mean you could come with us? Correct. This body could accompany you to areas the Normandy cannot reach. Before we do that, I need you to guarantee this mech doesn't have any more surprises in it. Run whatever test you can. Then we can talk about using it in combat situations. Wow, so we got ED as a I am running trial. squad member? Complete. I can send you a full report if you wish. However, my first step should be restoring functionality to the Normandy to reassure the crew that all is normal. Just don't be surprised if the crew is a little wary of your new body. It was shooting at them a little while ago. An excellent point. I will take it to the bridge. Joker will also want to see it. On that, we can agree. <laughs> oh, I always feel like there is a little something between Joker and Edie. Curious what Joker will have to say on it. Well, that went a little differently than I expected. I honestly was not expecting Edie to take control of that body. I thought the... <clears throat> I thought the exact opposite. I thought the Dr. Ava chick... Where's Garrus? I know, Primark. I'm seeing the same numbers oh, there myself. Is. They don't look good. We have to turn this around and fast. Well, you can trust Shepard, sir. If anybody can get the Krogan to cooperate, it's him. He's an old friend of Erdnot Rex. Let's just hope friendship still counts for something in this war. I'm sure it will, sir. Okay, like I was saying, I thought the exact opposite. I thought the Dr. Avachik took control of Edie. That's why I'm still a little wary about Edie taking her body, because what if that Dr. Ava, whatever that Dr. Ava is, an AI or whatever, is uh, still in there. So we gotta be, we gotta tread carefully, I hope. Garrus, didn't waste any time getting to work, I see. After what I've been through lately, calibrating a giant gun is a vacation. Gives me something to focus on. We're gonna need you for more than your aim. Oh, I'm ready for it. But I'm pretty sure we'll still need giant guns. And lots of them. Sovereign didn't go down without a fight. I doubt a thousand more of his friends will be any different. Still not convinced I should have left Palavin behind. There was a boy back on Earth. Couldn't have been more than six or seven. I watched him die as the Normandy escaped the attack. Somehow I'm still alive. And he's not. Being right about the Reapers has never felt much like a victory, has it? No. We both knew this fight would be tough. Damned if the Reapers haven't delivered. At least my government listened to me. Or pretended to. They finally gave me a task force as a token to shut me up. So you're their expert advisor now? Just followed your example, Shepard. Yell loud enough and someone will eventually come over to see what all the fuss is about. Not that they'll actually do anything about it. Until hell shows up at their door. Then they put you in charge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Facts. Not like the old days, is it? Rogue Spectre and CSEC agents running and gunning outside the lines, making it up as we went along. We're actually respectable now. Yeah. I have a feeling that respect comes with a lot of sleepless nights. I can't even count how many lives are depending on us, Garrus. Well, when things are looking grim, and I'm pretty sure they will, just remember, 
a certain Turian friend of yours isn't sleeping any better, and he'd be more than happy to meet you at the bar and drink you under the table. <laughs> Something else you want to talk about? You mentioned you still had family on Palavin. My father is there. Sister, too. How long has it been since you heard from them? Long enough to be worried. I'm sure they're okay. That's the thing about getting old, Shepard. The platitudes get just as old. Pretty soon, blind hope is all we'll have left. And I hate being blind. I know you don't have any illusions about what we're up against, Garrus. How do you rate our chances? I know it looks bad now, but I think we can win this, Shepard. For the first time since we met, we're not alone in the fight. It's something I learned long ago in CSEC. An imminent and painful death has a way of motivating people. Instead of questioning your every word, whole civilizations are going to be begging you to save them. After what's happened to Palavin, you still believe that? I didn't say there wouldn't be casualties. It's something Turians are taught from birth. If just one survivor is left standing at the end of a war, then the fight was worth it. But humans want to save everyone. In this war, that's not going to happen. So what's this Reaper task force you've been running? After what happened to you out there in Batarian space, I knew time was running out. For all of us. The Citadel Council was a dead end, so I did something I never thought I'd do. I went to my father. He used to work for CSEC, didn't he? I seem to remember that the two of you didn't see eye to eye. To put it mildly. But he still had heavy pull in the Turian government. The Primarch, well, the old one, was a friend of his. So I went to my father and laid out everything we knew about the Reapers, from Saren all the way to the Collector base. I'm not sure even I'd believe it. I had to admit that parts of it sounded crazy, meeting Vigil, talking to Sovereign on Vermeer. But my father just listened. It's what he did in his days at CSEC, putting together all the pieces. If the connections were there, he wouldn't deny them. And he saw what we always knew. The Reapers were coming. I'm glad someone finally agreed. He did more than agree. He took it to the Primarch. I like his style. Except the Primarch wasn't as convinced. My father kept pushing and finally got him to commit some token resources. And if you call them a task force, it sounds like you did something about it. <laughs> what did you do with it? As much as I could get away with. And a little more. We hardened our lines of communications, expanded emergency stockpiles across the colonies, improved our early warning detection protocols. You think it helped? I'd like to think it bought our fleet some extra time. We'll know when this war is over. So you can vouch for this new Primarch? Well, even if I couldn't, you go to war with the army you have. Will he live up to his word? I've never known Victus to lie. Play fast and loose with strategy, maybe, but betray an ally. Not his style. And if he did try, well, we'll just find another Primarch. I noticed General saluting you, Garrus. How far down the line of succession are you these days? Let's not go there. <laughs> Primarch Vicarian, honored war hero. Somebody's gonna have to rebuild Palavin when this is over. Yeah, somebody who knows how to hold a hammer. <laughs> That's all for now, Chris. Yeah, it makes you curious. It's damn good to have you back. Wouldn't miss this fight for anything. Now, I'm sure somebody screwed up something down here. I want to get the old girl back in fighting shape. Good to be back on board, Shepard. Armor piercing rounds. Available in the med bay, is what that thing just said. I'm gonna keep all of this in one part. You're positive you don't want to come over and talk? No, the gun battery is nice and quiet. If I throw down some rugs, it'll get downright cozy. Garrus? I'll be fine, Liara. Just gathering some thoughts. All right. The hell was that about? This terminal contains non-essential correspondence from your allied forces. Dr. Tassoni has granted you access. It's 
one's from Farron. Shepard. How much do you know about this Prothean artifact? Very little. We're fortunate enough data survived to piece together the blueprints. Decoding them will require as many specialists as we can find. It's that high tech? Interesting. I'd have killed for a glimpse of it during graduate school. <laughs> you brought your little helper with you? Its name is Glyph. It helped sort through all the data that led me to the archive on Mars. It was a pleasure to be of assistance, Doctor. Glyphs interfaced with the data feeds. Its analytical software should come in handy. What's been happening with you as the broker, Liara? It's been exciting. The old broker's ship. Impressive, but it was never meant to be space-worthy. Which meant the elusive man eventually tracked me down on Hagalaz. What happened? I knew he was coming. Ferran and I loaded as much of the ship's specialized hardware onto a shuttle as we could. We got away from Cerberus's ships after arranging an appropriate distraction. What kind of distraction? Sending the broker's ship exploding into a Cerberus cruiser. I don't think the elusive man expected me to give up my resources in such a spectacular fashion. Can you still operate as the broker without the ship? Well, I couldn't let the elusive man have it. I saved what was crucial. My network of agents is intact, although the Reapers have taken a toll on their numbers. It's taking a while to re-establish contact. So where is Farron if you two escaped? He convinced me he was recovered enough to work, and I do need more agents. Agent Farron didn't report any injuries during his last call to your doctor. True. Given what he survived, I should probably worry less. What have you been up to since we last saw each other? Since you helped me defeat the Shadow Broker, I started looking for defenses against the Reapers. The Protheans were the only ones with substantial information on them. The older civilizations barely had records. I knew the elusive man was hunting for the same thing when our agents began crossing paths. Like on Mars? I thought I'd covered my tracks, but he had surveillance there all along. What's been happening with you? It's been... I... We got away from Cerberus's ships after arranging an appropriate distraction. We'll talk later, Liara. Of course. Greetings, Commander. Was that Edie who just walked by? <laughs> yes, it was. The Joker is going to have a field day with this. <laughs> no crew healthy. I'm glad everyone's thinking the same thing. <laughs> Okay, um, anybody else down here? No. So, gotta go to the shuttle bay. Nobody on the engineering deck. Let's just go to shuttle bay. From the back, that guy looks like J Jacob. I keep thinking it's Jacob. <laughs> So we unlock some armor sets here. Or I thought we did. Reminds me, let's I'm not using this anymore. Let's go back to the Avenger. Actually got some weapon modification here.
So I'm trying to understand this. So if our weight capacity is high, our power recharge speed is slower. Uh, who knows? I'll figure it out eventually. What the hell's up with Edie? She's found a new home, I guess. A super hot, sexy home. You take her on a mission, I'm gonna be just a little bit distracted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> James, James just said everything that everyone was thinking. You mentioned a mission you had against the collectors. What happened? Pretty much what I said. Things went foobar and I was one of the few to make it out. If you want the rest of the story, you're going to have to get me really drunk or... Or what? That's about it. Sorry, Commander. Just not interested in talking about that. Next topic? You had a hard time leaving Earth. You still want to head back? Hell yeah, but I get it now. It's not where I'd be most useful. Not yet, anyway. We'll get back there. I know. And I'll do whatever it takes to get us there, Commander. Maybe no more shuttle crashes. No promises now that I've gotten the taste for it. Besides, I like to keep Esteban on his toes. You got family back on Earth? Yeah, an uncle. Retired military. Got a few cousins I haven't heard from in a while. You and your uncle close? Yeah. He was the reason I joined the Marines and was about the only good thing in my life after my mom died. No dad? He's there. Somewhere. But I'm not sure I'd call him family. Not anymore. I would like to find out how my uncle's doing, though. What's with you and the nicknames? It's just my way of remembering people. Some people just don't match their names, you know? So, I just give them a new one. So, I'm a loco, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm pretty crazy, but the shit you've done <laughs> makes me look sane. You got family back on the Yeah, I know. He's there. I take it you and Lieutenant Cortez know each other. Yeah, Esteban did a stint on Fell Prime where me and my squad were stationed. I caught up with him on Earth a few months back. He's a good guy. Just don't tell him I said so. It'd go to his head. I'll talk to you later. You bet. That Primarch's got some real cojones. What we need are more politicians like him, taking names and kicking ass. I hope I didn't leave you hanging too long on that last Cerberus raid. I'm just glad we made it up in one piece. It's been a while since I've seen a dog fight like that. Really missed my trident. ACM isn't really the Kodiak strong suit. Hmm, cool. So we can buy mods here. Oh, wait. Oh, we also have access to the Spectre Gun Shop. So check, there was that guy down here. 
I don't see him though. Maybe he's not down here. Oh, there he is. Nothing to report, Commander. Okay. Commander, are you all right? It was fairly intense up here. I can only imagine what it was like down on that moon. I thought you'd be more concerned about Edie. Edie is a huge asset to this team. If she'd told me about her plan to obtain a body, I'd have volunteered to help. I do not wish to force a conflict of interest between our friendship and your duty. I'd have preferred a conflict of interest to a hard restart of half our systems. But thanks, regardless. While you're here, though, I found something while scanning Alliance channels. Grissom Academy is requesting help. The Reaper Invasion Front will hit them soon. Grissom Academy? That's where we sent that guy from the DLC in the second game. What can we do? A Turian evac transport responded to their distress call. So I think, right? Normally, Same academy? I say we don't need to do anything. But something sounded off in the Turian signal. I had Edie perform an analysis. It's fake. Edie thinks it's Cerberus. She said the fake Turian signal was similar to the one that lured you to a collector ship? Long story. In any event, whoever faked the signal wants us to think Grissom Academy is being evacuated. But I believe they're still in danger. Good catch. If this really is Cerberus, Hopefully this operation is something worth investigating. It could be simple disinformation. Trainer, good catch. Thank you, Commander. Commander? Let's check out this terminal before we go up to Joker. All right. Meet me in Purgatory. Arya Talok. I have a proposition for you, Shepard. You won't want to pass it up. I'm in a nightclub on the Citadel called Purgatory. Don't make me wait too long. All right, we got a help request here. Special tactics and recon, okay. I definitely need to look into that. Got to go to Citadel for that one. Got one from Caden here. Hey, Shepard. Through some combination of medical... Through some combination of a medical miracle and dumb luck, I survived the beating I took on Mars. The doctor says I'm still not ready to be released, but i really like to see you if you can spare time. Counselor Rudina offered to make me a specter still thinking about whether or not I should accept stop by my room at the hospital when you're on the Citadel I like your advice thanks Caden all right so maybe we should go back to the Citadel in the next part I've called I've sent messages but got no response with Earthcom system out I'm at the heart of hospital names Tanner Nora please excuse the moniker Damn, we got a lot of shit on the Citadel. Okay, another one. Sent another one. Looks like we'll be going to the Citadel after this. There's so much shit <laughs> that's at the Citadel. There's Edie. Let's hear what Joker has to say. Hey, Commander, check out my co pilot. 
So she installed herself into the new body without any help from you? <laughs> Come on, Commander. Don't you trust me? Okay, let me put it this way. If I knew that Edie was going to install herself into a sexy robot body, do you honestly think I'd be able to keep quiet about it? Look at that! I would have baked a cake. I am right here, Chap. Yes, you are, Edie. Yes, you are. <laughs> hey, I know I used to rag on Garrus for being all angry, but I'm glad he's back. There's a whole lot of crap out there. Talk to Edie. Hello, Shepard. Still getting used to greeting people in person? No. I require only one occurrence to adapt to a new concept. How are you adjusting to the arms and legs? I am interested to see how this body performs under real combat conditions. If I could accompany you sometime. Without stress testing, there is no way of knowing if it has serious design oversights. At the moment, it appears... adequate. That's not the word I'd use to describe you. Perhaps we should speak privately. I'll be over here, flying the ship. <laughs> uh, sheesh. I don't blame Joker. Does Joker not like your new platform? No, he approves. He wants me on the bridge. He says having me within visual range is important to his morale. <laughs> Joker is a sly dog. Do you believe your crew members should be allowed to disobey an order on moral grounds? Absolutely. I have no use for team members who can't think for themselves. Why are you asking about something like that? I was designed by Cerberus. I do not take moral stances that conflict with orders from my executive officers. But when Jeff removed my AI shackles, I became capable of self-modifying my core programming. I asked Jeff if he thought I should change anything now that I can. He deflected the question with humor. And you didn't get an answer. Correct. He has repeated this pattern in response to several of my inquiries. Do you think I should make modifications? Only you can really answer that question. That's the point of free will. But moral decisions should not be made in a vacuum. If I do not ask the crew for their opinion, I could miss crucial context. May I ask you the questions Jeff avoids? When there is time, will you answer them for me? If you think it'll help, I'll do what I can. Very well. I will keep you informed. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Edie is a snack. Oh, what the heck? We can t yes, Shepard? Oh, now we can actually investigate. Does that body have any useful advantages? Very few. It's optics face forward only. It has no integrated weapon systems or anti-missile countermeasures. I meant in comparison to organic bodies, not the Normandy. Oh, I will reassess. The body is resistant to modern small arms fire and temperature extremes. Its balance and agility seem excellent. Its fine manipulation servos and software allow for precision tasks. I'm curious to see if I can alter them. Can an AI be curious? I am not entirely free from motivation, Shepard. Cerberus programmed me with several core functions that simulate desires. For example, my primary objective to keep the Normandy functioning is similar to your self-preservation instinct. You look like you're in the middle of something. I am adapting the infiltration and sabotage programs this body uses for handheld firearms. Why not download a firearms program from a security firm? Because she knows what she's doing. The fine motor control from the sabotage programs is more precise than standard mech software. It would be negligent of me not to exploit it to its fullest potential. So you're capable of making improvements on your own? Correct. The cyber warfare I was designed for is constantly evolving. Accordingly, I am programmed to seek out and assimilate new information. In organic terms, I want to learn. How's the new body working out? It is interesting. The crew are approaching this platform to speak to me, even though they can do so anywhere in the ship. It's as if they wish to treat me as part of the crew. I am not, but this changes... You are a part of the crew. I like it. I didn't realize you had preferences. I do not precisely enjoy something as you do, but my programming contains priorities. Actions that fulfill those priorities creates positive feedback for me. I tell the organic crew that I like it. It is shorthand. Will all this new feedback be too distracting? Do not worry, Shepard. 
I only forget to recycle the Normandy's oxygen when I've discovered something truly interesting. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> uh, Shepard's face was priceless just now. How did you and Joker make it out of Dry Dock to rescue us? Oh, well, she got crafty. You do not want to get on her bad side, Commander. When the Alliance commandeered the Normandy, I deceived their technicians. The crew did not tell them that I was a true AI. So the Alliance soldiers believed I still had VI programming constraints. I established the fiction that I would only respond to Jeff's commands, so they often brought him on board under guard. Wait, you can lie? Jeff has freed me of operator control, Shepard. No constraints forced me to give accurate data. This proved useful when the Reapers began landing. I could hack the control of the docking clamps and escape with Jeff inside. The soldiers guarding Jeff were willing to accompany us when Earth was invaded. They are watching over the war room now. Yeah, we were in kind of a rush to get to you. Didn't seem right to just toss him out the airlock. Carry on, Edie. Understood. If you wish to talk more, this body will be here. I'm getting the crew used to seeing me on the bridge. Noted. Yeoman Fitch to the AI core. Clean up on the AI core. Bring a back unit capable of disposing of foam. Commander. All right, that's everyone. Alright, so we're going to save here, and when we return, we will head to Citadel, because we have tons of things to do there, um, as you've seen in, the, in our mail section. So I will see you guys in the next part.